<laughs> Welcome to Tesla, ladies and gentlemen. All right, man, y'all appreciate everybody very much for stopping by. So, you know, I've been doing this YouTube thing for a few years, and I realize I've never done a Levy Rosman, also known as Gotham Chess Game. And, you know, he's like getting back into chess these days, trying to get his Grand Master title, which I'm pretty sure he'll get. Uh, you know, he's an international master, so he's kind of like right there, bro. Uh, but I went ahead and went back and grabbed a game between Fabio and Caruana and Levy Rosman, and this is taking out a title Tuesday from a little while back. So, like, the final boss, Fabiano Caruana. <laughs> That's my little nickname for him. Uh, but all my people in the Philippines, I would say, matter means salamat. And anybody else who is coming from around the world, I appreciate you very much, but let's take a look, see what we got. All right, man, so we got E4, and then we do see the move D5. So it seems that Gotham Chess is a, uh, you know, Team Scandi. Now, when you play E4... There are three moves. So you, know, you kind of separate like defenses into a couple different categories. There are those that play somewhat passively and they kind of give you E4, D4. There are some that prevent you from doing E4, D4, like E5 or the, the Sicilian. Uh, and then there are those that immediately attack the E4 pawn and don't give you the time uh, to uh, go E4, D4. Uh, and one of those is the Scandinavian. The other two, which one of them is completely terrible, never play this. <laughs> it is known as the Fred uh, or Duras Gambit. Uh, and this just completely opens up your king and you die a horrible death. Um, so if you want to have like crazy fun, I guess play it. Uh, but uh, there is also the Aliekin's defense. Uh, but this just kind of gives white like, you know, like crazy center pawns. I mean, they kind of do, you know, something at like that maybe. Uh, so you kind of give white a good game if they know what they're doing. Uh, but the Scandinavian is definitely the best one out of all of those. Uh, so it has a very solid reputation. Uh, we do see a uh, pawn taking D5. We got queen taking D5. We got knight to C3. Queen goes to A5. So this is going to be like absolute mainline stuff. We do see the move D4. We got knight to F6, knight to F3. Uh, and then we do see the move bishop to f5. Uh, and it's a very logical move. A lot of the times what you see uh, from Scandinavian players is they kind of erect this e, uh, e6, c6 uh, structure. Uh, and it is very, very annoying for white players to play against that because there's really not a good way for you to kind of like crash through there. Uh, but this is just kind of getting that bishop out of that chain when you do play uh, e6 at some point. Uh, the absolute top move in this position here is c6. And, you know, we kind of have some ideas when we are white to go like maybe knight e5. Uh, you know, you can maybe start to develop your bishops uh, and a knight can come back to c5 uh, uh, or c4. So if you have not played this kind of giving the queen like an escape, uh, you can kind of run out of squares over here, man. We got some little discoveries going on, so it can get kind of nasty. So usually you see 6 6 uh, but b bishop to f5 is... Uh, an option as well. Uh, we do see knight to h4. Uh, Fabi's like, bro, I don't even like your bishop at all. So he's trying to knock it away. What you really kind of want is uh, black to kind of go back, uh, you know, here. Uh, and then it kind of messes up their whole plan that they had with moving the bishop outside their chain. Their chain. Uh, but we do see bishop to g6. And this is the novelty of the game. It's kind of insane because you kind of want to do that. Uh, you kind of, like I said, don't want to back this bishop back up and kind of undevelop it because you've just wasted some time. So, but I mean, you do kind of give it up this way. But anyways, uh, we do see bishop going to e2. Uh, there was possibly some ideas of going bishop uh, to h5 uh, and uh, attacking this queen right here. So we're just defending against that. Uh, now we do see the move e6. We got castles by white. Uh, we do see knight to c6. Uh, and we actually do kind of have some long castle pressure. Uh, so those of you who have played e4 and they play against the Scandinavian, uh, you know, sometimes black just literally just kind of like develops all their pieces, plays this, and then castles, and then you have like an insane amount of pressure uh, on this d4 pawn, the rook kind of barreling down. So, you know, if you are not developing your pieces uh, correctly, uh, you can get into some trouble. Uh, so that is what we are kind of having an idea of, uh, and that is why we see uh, Fabi go bishop f3. Basically, we're saying, hey, bro, you could castle queen side all you want to and put a rook right here but i'm just gonna i'm gonna take your knight dude and your structure is gonna be messed up and you're gonna be sad and you're gonna cry and like you know be whatever uh but we do see a uh, bishop d6 in this position uh, we got the move g3 and g3 is gonna be relevant later i'm gonna tell you guys about it in a minute we do see castles by black uh knight takes uh, g6 pawn takes g6 uh and then we do see knight to e2 rook a to d8 and like i said we do have a lot of pressure uh, on this d pawn right here so we just kind of have like a, a french defense idea uh we move the knight out of the way and just go c3 and we have a very solid structure over here the queen does go to f5 i mean 
This bishop is a little bit suspect. I'm not going to lie. So, I mean, you know, let's go ahead and attack it with the queen, right? Bishop goes back to g2. We do see the move e5. Uh, we got pawn taking e5. And if this bishop had a really nice discovery some kind of way, I mean, this queen would be kind of unhappy. Uh, but you see, we're kind of blocked up pretty severely. We don't have any checks or anything. We do see knight taking e5. We got knight to d4. Not only does this plug up kind of that file, uh, but we are hitting this queen also. We got queen back to c8. We got queen going to c2. Uh, you know, it's always good. I mean, even though we have these two pieces in the way right now, I mean, you know, you just want to kind of make a move or two. Uh, and this queen is not the happiest camper. So we just kind of got it off of that little uh, discovery. Uh, we do see the move a6. There's no knight to b5 stuff going on. Uh, we really kind of like our bishop's position right here. We do see bishop to g5. We got the move c6. We see rook a to d1. We got bishop back to c7. We do see the move h3. We got bishop to b6, and then we got a little tickling of the bishop uh, going to b3, and the bishop just goes back to c7. And I will say this. This is something you do kind of have to be careful about, and I kind of have like a comparison between the previous position and this one. You have to be careful that when you make a move, you don't pretty much have to undo that move uh, because then you kind of just waste the time. So if we go back two moves ago, this is the position that we see, right? Like you look at black's pieces, you see that they're kind of in their, you know, squares. You see what white has going on, right? Now let's go two moves forward and see what has changed. You see that black did nothing. So they went bishop b6, they went back to c7, so they pretty much just kind of did kind of nothing. Uh, their position didn't change at all. White got this h3, uh, and they did get queen to b3 in the game. So, I mean, they got a little bit further advanced, and sometimes these players like Fabi, I mean, that's all they need to kind of push on for a victory. Uh, we do see the queen going back to c2 for Fabi, and I was like, dude, I just said, <laughs> he literally did this. He went here, and then he came back, and he's like, bro, just forget what I just got done saying. Uh, so if you look at the position, I mean, you know, at least white got the h3 move in, if nothing else. Uh, and then we do see bishop going back to b6. We got rook to d2, rook goes down to d7. We do see rook f to d1, rook f to d8. So you see that, I mean, making the moves that we see, we saw both players make. I mean, neither one of the players have gotten into like a bad position, but like I say, you do kind of have to be careful because sometimes you can do that uh, and you can kind of make like a move and then have to undo the move and it just completely demolishes your entire game. Uh, so just use that as an instruct instructive example of uh, what kind of not to do sometimes. Uh, we do see the move B3. We got Rook over to E8. We do see Bishop to F4. We got Bishop back to C7. Knight goes down to E2, encouraging a trade of Rooks. We got Rook D to E7. We got Bishop back to G5, Rook back to D7. So you see that both players, they're kind of at like uh, a standstill. They're trying to kind of pick and prod at each other's position. They're trying to optimize their pieces and kind of trying to see where they can get, you know, kind of uh, get in. Rook takes d7, we got knight taking d7, we got knight back up to d4, we got knight back to f8, we got bishop to d2, and then we see bishop to b6. <laughs> and I'm going to just call this the levy move, bro. This is the third time this game we've seen this maneuver. Now, we don't have to worry about a queen to b3, so there is a little bit of difference in this situation, uh, but this definitely is beneficial if you could take here, because since the queen is actually not defended here on c2, uh, this uh, cannot be uh, a situation if we do get rid of this pawn right here. We got bishop going to e3, knight goes to d5, we see bishop taking d5, and there was just too much pressure. I mean, you got this bishop down here, uh, and we got the rook and the knight both trained on it. And this is the position that I was talking about a second ago. Once bishop takes on d5, pawn takes, you do see that uh, this queen is opened up. So if we get rid of this knight without this bishop being here, uh, this queen is actually hanging. Uh, so we got king up to g2. Uh, and the crazy thing is this position, it says dead even. The computer's like, bro, zero. <laughs> Not even zero point anything, like literally zero, zero, zero. Uh, we do see uh, the move knight to d7. We got a4. Knight goes to f6. We got queen to d3. We got knight to e4, rook goes to c1, queen slides over to d8, and then we do see knight to c2. And one of the things I did want to mention about this position that we have here, you see that Levy has an isolated d pawn. And I mean, the dream of Levy is to basically be able to push that pawn. Uh, but you see Fabiano Caruana like textbook showing you how to play against an isolated pawn. If you notice the situation, it gets better later. But if you notice the situation, you got a bishop, a pawn, 
a knight and a queen all literally telling you that you're never ever pushing this pawn in your life <laughs> so we can't even really configure our pieces in a way that we can really force this and then we put an x clan behind the situation after we see knight back to f6 and then we see rook to d1 and now we have the rook controlling d4 so we basically we basically have 50 pieces controlling d4 so levy like i mean he he hasn't went to sleep and dreamed that he's gonna push that pawn never 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 uh, so we do see Queen going over to C7, redirecting and saying, hey, man, if I can't push D4, I'm going to try to see if I can, you know, hit the tender uh, C3. We do see Bishop to D4. Rook slides over to C8. We got Bishop taking F6, Pawn taking F6, and then we do see the move Knight to B4. In this situation right here, you really can't protect, uh, you know, this C pawn anymore. So you have to try to counterattack some kind of way. Uh, so we do see Knight going to B4. And this is setting up a fork. You get the you get the pawn anyway. We do see queen taking c3, and then knight does take d5, and this does set up the fork uh, with the uh, the bishop and the queen. So we just trade here. Queen takes d3, rook takes d3, um, and there really isn't too much to write home about in this position. I mean, you do have uh, the same amount of pawns for both sides. Uh, you're slightly a little bit damaged as far as black is concerned. Uh, but it's not like, I mean, either side really has like that severe of an advantage. Uh, but I would say that black is definitely kind of like the one that's defending their position. And we do see uh, Levy going bishop back to d8. Uh, and this is a very nice move uh, because it is kind of uh, preventing what this knight would try to do. Obviously, the knight wants to try to better itself some kind of way, but can't quite do it at the moment. We do see knight going back to e3. We got bishop to e7. And then we actually have a really nice move that we can make if we are white, and that is rook to d7. I think that most of you guys looked at this and were like, hey, man, rook to d7. Exactly. <laughs> Not only does rook to d7 uh, attack uh, this bishop, but it is attacking this pawn right here. And there really isn't a great way for you to um, you know, defend both of them. And you have to go on a counterattack, which is bishop to c5, uh, hitting this knight. Uh, and that is probably the best that you can do. Uh, you want to kind of cause white some type of damage so you absolutely can take rook takes b7 here but we do see uh fabi go knight to d5 just making sure that black doesn't really have anything uh you know kind of at their disposal giving them any damage uh we do see king going to g7 we got rook taking b7 uh and then we do see rook going to d8 we have actually reached a position uh there is a very killer winning move uh that fabi can play in this position if you want to try to guess that move go ahead and do so Okay, so I think some of you guys might see the idea. Uh, it's two moves deep. Uh, the idea is actually hitting this tender uh, square right here. With this rook on this seventh rank, it is pinning this pawn down. Uh, so you do have the ability to place a knight in, on this square. It is not influenced by this bishop at all. So if you can like kind of move this knight somewhere and then kind of jump it into here, you have a fork going on the king and the, and the rook. Uh, so there is really kind of two ways for you to do that. There's knight to c7, and then there's knight back to f4. Uh, what we actually see in the game is knight to f4, and it is an actually in this position that Levy Rosman does uh, lose the game on time. Uh, he's a little bit lost positionally, but he does lose the game on time, so it just officially is a loss. Uh, but in this position here, I'd like to say the top move um, is rook to d6, just kind of defending you know, what White is trying to do. Um, so I really kind of feel like he would have made this move. Uh, king to f8, uh, or king to, uh, yeah, king to f8, king to g8 are like ideas also, uh, just making that a, a kind of a non-move. Uh, but going back in the position um, after we saw this, um, it was absolutely insane to go knight to c7. And there is just way too many threats in the position. Uh, you know, you're going to be trying to go knight to e6, like I said before. You really kind of want to move the rook somewhere. Uh, but then there's also uh, knight taking a6, which really can't be stopped at all. Uh, you can't stop it with any, like, you know, rook over here. There's no way to move the bishop to stop that. You can, you can push it, uh, but you do run into this right here, uh, and it is not the absolute best. You can't really defend this position. Uh, and this is absolutely 100% lost if you are black. So if... You know, if Fabi had found this, then it would be like pretty much game over. Levy probably would probably resign. Well, I mean, it's a really fast game, so he probably wouldn't have resigned. But, you know, it would have just been too complicated to continue to play on. Uh, but like I said, we did see Knight down to F4. And 
Route to D6 just stops all of that going on. So, you know, you, you, you're kind of still in a fight. I mean, you know, you definitely have, like, you know, some defensive possibilities in this position. So, uh, but that is that game. Uh, like I said, I realized that I never did a Gotham chess game. So I was like, man, why not, bro? I mean, you know, he is the number one YouTuber on YouTube. So, I mean, you know, why not? I feel like I've done everybody else, bro. Uh, but uh, all of my people in the Philippines, um, I will say, Marganang Umaga, Kamusta na King Makai Bigan. Uh, Mabuhay to you. I appreciate you guys very much for stopping by. Anybody else from around the world, you know, you can drop your language in the comments uh, and I will respond accordingly if I've missed you. But I'm going to see you guys next time.